What are some insights that generalize to the training process of what it takes to be a KGB spy? Right. So uh, let me start with the tradecraft. So I was taught Morse code. That took a while. Uh, I, I I was uh, instructed in how to you know use a shortwave radio and to receive uh, you know, the the shortwave uh, transmissions with Morse code. I was taught uh, uh, an a encryption and decryption algorithm, manual a- algorithm. Manually. Yep. You you might be interested that eventually I figured out. Uh, at least one of the patterns, uh, the the algorithm was such that the and this was all about digits, like, mm-hmm. uh, and the algorithm was such that in the end the uh, the digits that were used to decipher other digits that were handed uh, that were sent to me via shortwave radio, there were let's say if there were a hundred digits, there were an equal number of ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, and seven, and up until zero. And I was told that uh, these um, uh, algorithms, these manual algorithms were, were good for about 300 uses. After that, they could still be deciphered. I'm assuming nowadays that uh, wouldn't take as much. Yeah, with, with computers for sure. But there's probably, they're probably designed in a way that you can manually sort of uh, it's efficient and convenient to use them manually. Well, it's not it's, to, it, to optimize it, cryptographic security. It's to optimize, it's like to balance security and like humans being able to actually. Yeah, no, I got to disagree. It was neither efficient nor convenient. Okay. It would, took a long time. So it wasn't designed uh, well. When <laughs> what, was, what was significantly easier to do, uh, but uh, that would require you to have spy paraphernalia with you. This is what's called a one-time pad. Uh-huh. So you have the the set of numbers yeah. on on a sheet of paper uh, th- that had to be developed. I had to use iodine to make those numbers visible. Those are known to be uh, unbreakable unless they are used multiple times. The same the same sheet of paper mm-hmm. because you know the person who encrypts has the same set of numbers as the person who uh, who decrypts. And one 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 time use you cannot figure out wh- what the message is. Oh, interesting. But this is a quick way to communicate from one person to another one yes, time. The, one time. Well, one time, but I had a pad with multiple uh, sheets oh, of paper, okay. right? And uh, the reason that uh, they gave me a manual one is because I literally, I had only, when I when I wound up in the United States, I had only one thing with me that uh, only a spy can have, and that was a, uh, a writing pad with... Uh, uh, where the first 10 pages or so were impregnated with a trace of a chemical that was used for sec- secret writing. Uh, but you really would have to know what you're looking for to, you know, you see this pad, it was bought, bought at uh, you know, Walmart. And Can you explain a little little further, what what is the chemical here that, what are we talking about? So how, I, I don't understand how it's possible to have a physical pad that does the encryption without any computing. I, how does it encrypt? All right, so so no no it doesn't it doesn't do any work you know so and the uh, the communication that the encrypted communication was uh, was a, uh, a set of uh, uh, groups of five five digits and another five and, and there's always a gap in between mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so let's say if I get this radio transmission, I write them all down, mm-hmm. and then I then I use my uh, develop my algorithm, and then I do mathematics, either addition or subtraction. Mm-hmm. The resulting set of digits had th- then had a one to one correlation to Got it. letters. And this is an easy way to then do the correlation. Got yes. It. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, that's cool. That's was, uh, was and not, you're saying the algorithm was not efficient. It was not. Oh, was the not, manual that t- took a long time, and and you can't make an error. <laughs> right. Uh, would you know where? Can you? Is it easy to debug? No. You, no. No. You do it twice. You do it twice, and that's how you check. If it's identical, check. then you know. <laughs> but like, if it's if not, it's not then not. Yeah, then one is right and the other is wrong. So you got to do it again. Don't make mistakes. No, that's right. And I re- right. really didn't. But anyway, um, so th- th- I was I was learning that. Uh, I was also uh, told that I was required to become proficient in another language. And they gave me a choice, and I picked English. That's what was the other one? 
Oh no, they gave him pick one, friend. Oh, you know, one. whatever okay. is spoken in the West. Got it. Uh, what was what was what would be second to you? Would would you think French because of Paris? What would you? What why English? English was a no brainer because I I was a straight A, stu a, a student in English without studying. I, 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 it came so easily to me. Yeah. So that's why I cho <laughs> chose it, right? Uh, right. So that was that. Uh, then uh, um, I, uh, I I was taught the basics of um, uh, counter surveillance. You know, some trickery and 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 uh, uh, surveillance detection routes where you wander around in the city for three hours and determine whether you're being followed or not. Mm -hmm. That requires you to plan the route very well. I give you one example that uh, that will uh, illustrate that. Uh, it's my my favorite spot uh, when 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 I was in Moscow, I did a lot of that also. Uh, and this, the, my favorite spot was I it was a, a not well traveled uh, uh, road. It it went down the hill and and curved, and at the bottom of the hill, there was a telephone booth. And when you open the door and and pick up the telephone. You have to look back, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like this, right? It wasn't a giveaway. This was normal. It was mm -hmm. natural. So yeah, yeah, I could see if somebody would come walking after me. You know these kinds of things, or you would, uh, uh, you know, use um, public transportation, uh, big buildings uh, where you ne needed to use an elevator and see who's because surveillance. The the object of surveillance is to Never lose sight of the individual who you're surveilling because at that point you may miss the window that where, where he does something that yep. that you're looking for. So somebody o o always has to come close, right? Did you have to also study surveillance? No, so only counter surveillance. And what helped me in in, in all my training, uh, you know, I, I would be uh, would have a competition with a. Uh, folks that were coming, that were following me, and me, mm -hmm. and I beat them every time. Uh, they were at a disadvantage because one of them always had to be close, and and if you saw the same face twice, you know that you were being followed. And I had a very very good uh, memory for for faces. So basically, figure out a fixed route, yeah. mm -hmm. and then a fixed route that allows you to uh, survey the area. And then yeah. record the faces you've seen yeah. inside your mind, yes. and if uh, you see and multiple times a single face, that's that's a bad sign. And and they they could they could you uh, use uh, different clothes. Yeah. Uh, what they didn't have was face masks. Yeah. The CIA does nowadays. They they can give you a different face with, within seconds. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm. How big? <laughs> I mean, again, you talk about paranoia. Uh, uh -huh. um, is that part of the? Is that a big part of the job? Uh, counter surveillance, like being constantly paranoid that you're being watched. Yeah, I was supposed to. Isn't that quite stressful? So is that is that one of the? Is that actually an effective way to operate? Uh, no, but it, it sort of becomes a routine. Uh, I was told to do it uh, while in the U.S. Uh, once a month. And uh, okay, it's like a cleaning out. Oh, the, not uh, not every day. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Once a month, or before I would say mail a letter with secret writing, so I was sure that you know nobody saw me put an envelope into Got it. Uh, a post box. So this is one of the tools in your toolbox. So there's Morse code. There's yes, the decryption and uh, encryption. There's the counter surveillance, photography, photography, um, making oh. making micro dots. You know what a micro dot is? Yeah. What's a micro well, that's uh, that's uh, uh, you, you use uh, you you take a, a photograph and you use a microscope in reverse and uh, make that photograph really small, so small that it's like the the, the head of a pin that can be used to, to uh, hide under a postage stamp. Uh, in reality, I knew how to make them. But in reality, they they never asked me to to make use of that uh, technique. So, it's, so it's, a, it's a sort of an encryption mechanism for photographs. Yeah. So what we do nowadays uh, embed uh, code in 
in uh, PDFs and stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Okay, all right. So that that was a, a learning, a training process, both in the physical space and yes. sort of um, yes, algorithmically. Uh, Is there other things? Oh, you, you bet. Uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, the uh, I was uh, the first book I was given to read was the history of this uh, the uh, Communist Party of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Oh, so understand. Yeah, that's interesting because you said you had to read Western literature. Yeah, that too. How much? How much reading? So history. How much history? Uh, politics, geopolitics. N not culture. much more. The, but they made me read that document. Uh, other than that, I wasn't supposed to study the Soviet Union. I wasn't yeah. supposed. And that, that was not. And I didn't. When they sent me to Moscow, it wasn't to learn Russia, Russian, right? It wasn't to learn English. Um, the the second document they gave me was the the constitution of West Germany, and then I got lots of magazines and stuff like that. Uh, as I told you, I was uh, also told to uh, uh, watch West German television, which I which I uh, embraced with a vengeance because it was better than East German. Mm. So I would get up in the morning and have a little breakfast and watch the German version of Sesame Street. <laughs> And that 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 helps you um, that helps you g get an understanding of the culture oh, because you if you have to do any kind of uh, interaction, yes. any kind of spying, then you have to be in, be sure. able to effectively integrate. Yourself. Well, you you also have to know like and and that would have been easier uh, if I if they had sent me to West Germany. You know all the soccer teams, you know stuff that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. When I came to the U.S., I knew very little stuff that everybody knows. That's why I had to be very cautious and you know take it in over time anyway uh and the the last thing i want to mention is uh they uh, i was strongly encouraged to uh expand my my cultural education in other words go to visit museums uh go to the theater uh not so much movies uh opera read read books you know, from all kinds of authors uh, that was important to them. And once a month, I had to write a, a report, what I did. But the interesting thing, there was not a, there was no curriculum, there was no agenda, there were no check marks. It was all ad hoc. You know, now you do this, and then you do that. Uh, and uh, and a lot of this also, they relied on my initiative. Mm -hmm. Again. I mean, that's part of the evaluation, too. You bet. Uh, are you able to have creative? It's interesting that they're like developing a, a James Bond type of character here, which is what? What's the reason to go to the opera? As you become yes. cultured in a certain kind of way, where perhaps that makes you uh, more charming, more charismatic in terms of your ability to integrate yourself in different situations. You were absolutely right. Uh, uh, I, I was, I was, uh, at, 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 when I came to the U.S. After about uh, two years, roughly, um, I was cultured enough to uh, not uh, make a bad impression at a, at a diplomatic soiree in Washington D.C. I mingled freely. Yes. All right, and 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 so the whole idea was for me to sort of reach into the upper uh, realms of society, where the targets would be juicier than you know the worker bees. <laughs> 